In this package is one of the oldest living creatures that still exist today, and they've been around for over 300 million years. Which makes them older than this T-Rex, and while he was out hunting, and this Triceratops was hiding for his life, and whatever this dinosaur is called was being hunted by the T-Rex, this stream that he was crossing was probably filled with tons of tiny crustaceans called triops, which have been around before dinosaurs even existed. <laughs> and after living for that long, you can now get them delivered right to your door with one day shipping, which is exactly what I did. And after spending some time in an Amazon warehouse, I now had 200 of these microscopic triop eggs. But over the next 30 days, they'll transform from these tiny specks of dust into these alien-like creatures big enough to fit in the palm of my hand. So to get started with hatching, I whipped out my finest piece of Tupperware and began filling it with sand I stole from my local playground. And while those kids won't be too happy, my triops will be, so who really cares? Then I took it over to my aquarium and filled it with some pre-cycled water to hopefully increase the hatching rate. But they seem to do just fine hatching in these dirty puddles, so I don't really know if this will help. And just for fun, I took one of these plants out and threw it in there too. Now, it was time to add in these tiny eggs and see if they actually hatch. So with the eggs all added in, I still had one more addition to make to their hatching setup. A piece of my own hair, so maybe they'll look a little bit like me when they grow up. I don't know, isn't that how like, biology works? But all I could do now is just wait and see. The next, <laughs> the next morning. All right, it's been less than a day since I added in the triops, and since putting in the eggs, I put on this heat lamp to make sure the water is warm enough for them to hatch. And from above, it doesn't look like any have hatched yet. But if you come down to the side, you can see there's already tons of life in what's basically a sandwich container in the form of these microscopic dots just bouncing around. So far, it looks like 13 of them have actually hatched. And I think I already found my favorite out of them all. This little guy that I'm gonna name Jeffrey. Isn't he so cute? Jeffrey died. Now on day two, it was time to give them their first meal. And I'm just using some regular fish food that I crushed into tiny pieces so they'll be able to eat it. And this was pretty cool to see, only one day after they hatched, they've already basically quadrupled in size. So for the next few days, I continued to feed them by crushing up some fish and turtle food so they get the right nutrients, until on day 7 when they started to look more and more like alien creatures. Alright, it's day 7 and these guys are looking absolutely massive. Over the past week, they've probably like 50 x in size, and they're starting to look a little bit creepy. I don't trust them at all, to be honest. You know, after being around for like 300 million years, they probably got some tricks up their sleeve. Now for the next couple of days, they continued growing at a rapid pace and some of them got cannibalized along the way. That's what they do, they eat each other. And now that they were so big, it was time to start working on a bigger tank for them because they can't live in this dish forever. Well, they could, but forever wouldn't be too much longer. And the tank that they're moving into is actually the first tank that I used for Wally. And he's also gotten a lot bigger, so I'll be upgrading his tank again soon. Now the first thing I had to do was open this box very carefully so I don't damage what's inside of it. And then I had to stab it. Now this first layer is for the plants that I'll be adding so that they have enough nutrients to grow properly. And then I'll be covering it with sand so that the triops can dig into it and lay their eggs. And obviously adding water because they swim. Then I just had to add a light, throw on a filter, throw a duck, and add a water heater. Then after making sure the water wouldn't kill them by adding in some Seachem Prime, the tank was ready for them to move in. Come my children. It is time to free you from your Tupperware prison. Now after all the triops had finished eating each other, I was left with only about six or seven to add to this bigger tank. But I think 50% of them making it to adulthood isn't too bad for my first attempt at this. And they seem to be enjoying the new tank as well. Everything was going great, they were getting along perfectly, and nothing was going wrong is what I would have said if nothing went wrong. The signs were all there. This one triop doing backflips endlessly. I thought it was funny at the time, 
but it was really a sign that he wasn't getting enough oxygen. But others, like Frederick, were doing fine. He was happily digging in the sand to lay his eggs, which is normally a sign that the water quality is okay. Man, he sure is good at digging. Bodies were spread across the bottom of the tank. This one, still hanging on to life by a thread. Others had already passed, laying next to the shed skin of traps who were lucky enough to survive and keep growing. This one had red marks across the bottom of his body, a sign that he wasn't able to shed his skin and passed because of it. His sibling desperately nudged him to try to get him to wake up, or because he wanted to eat him, because they're cannibals. But all I could do was scoop out the bodies and give them a valiant burial. And now on day 16, we only had three triops remaining, Frederick, Gertrude, and Pablo. Now from the looks of things, they were doing pretty good, but they just had this bare sand bottom tank to explore. So I went over to my planted tank and took some plant clippings so I could add them to this tank. I also added in a couple of these rocks just because I wanted to, there's no reason. But to finish off the tank, I got one of these calcium fish feeder chests to hopefully release calcium into the water, which should help the trap shed their skin and keep growing. So hopefully we don't have another incident like before. And now the tank was pretty much done. All that was left to do is let the traps explore, which they did, swimming around the tank, sifting through the sand looking for food, shedding their skin normally and without any issues, it was going great. Until about day 25, when I realized I hadn't seen Pablo in a while. Now I was always a little bit worried about him because he was only half the size of the two other triops, making him a prime candidate for being cannibalized. But I was just hoping that the two other triops would leave him alone because I was feeding them a lot. I mean, tons of crushed up fish food, gourmet algae wafers that they were just devouring, why would you ever need to eat your sibling with all this food? But it just wasn't enough. Frederick and Gertrude were greedy for more. And eventually I found Pablo's body with our main suspect, Gertrude, walking away nonchalantly like she didn't just kill her sibling. And they didn't even seem to care. They just continued laying their eggs in the sand together. But I guess I can't really blame them. I mean, Pablo was kind of like the annoying younger sibling. Maybe he deserved it. 